Hi, this is Rich Harrington, and today we are going to take a look at the black and white adjustment command. Now, this is a custom tutorial for Tip Squirrel, and I hope you enjoy the website here. A lot of great stuff up here, and really good community sharing things to you. So, here we go. I'd like to go ahead and jump right in. Now, the black and white adjustment is best added as an adjustment layer. But before we do it, I want to show you the way not to do black and white. Now, many people will simply drop on a hue saturation lightness adjustment layer and strip away the color. And in the case here, you see that, yes, we have a black and white image, but it's not very impressive. And really, the issue at play here is that black and white photography is not the absence of color. Rather, the color values influence the tone, and you really need to tweak this. Without any color here, the blue sky and the red rocks pretty much have the same tonal value, and we get really low contrast, and it's just not a very dynamic photo. So instead of hue saturation lightness, let's go ahead and over and add a black and white adjustment here. There it is. Now, one of the things I always like to tell people in Photoshop is you don't have to be afraid of the auto button. You can always try it, and if it doesn't work for you, then just ignore it or reset it. Let's try it, though. I hit auto, and that did an okay job. It certainly found contrast there between the blue and the red rocks, but I'd like to tweak that a little bit. If we grab this on image tool here, this lets us click inside the image, and it automatically adjusts the right slider. So in this case, the skies are being affected by cyan. So I like go ahead. Now if I take that too far, it's going to get too noisy, but let's sort of go in there. That looks pretty good. And we'll just continue to refine that a bit. And I could tweak that a little bit too with the blue slider, knowing that the cyan and the blues are working sort of together there. So by pulling both of those down, we get a nice high contrast sky. I can come down here, click in the red, and I see that that is influencing the rocks. So we can go ahead and drag that till we sort of find what we want. And, you know, there are other sliders here, and you see sometimes that the reds and the yellows work in conjunction with each other. Now, that's working great, but we also have the ability to choose from presets here. So you see things like high contrast blue, which is going to go ahead and really pull the blue so it's brighter, or high contrast red, and it's sort of the opposite. And those could serve as good starting points that you can always tweak until you're happy with them. Now, once you got what you like, don't forget that there's the tint option here, which you can use to go ahead and tint an image. Now, I often find that the tint is a little bit strong, so I'll often go into the saturation here and back that off so it's a little less intense, and that tends to work well. Most people just look at the color picker this way, forgetting that they could choose any individual method, which makes this slider a little more powerful. Other thing I like to point out is that the black and white adjustment modes work great as blending mode layers. So if I've got this layer here, I can also just change its mode. And things like overlay does a nice look. Notice how that's sort of got a high contrast bleach bypass look. Or soft light, a little bit more subtle. And you can get into any of those here. Darkening the image down with multiply, giving it an age effect. Lots of options to play with. I'll often use a black and white adjustment to do a little bit of aging like that and then toss on a vibrancy adjustment layer and pull the saturation down just a little bit there, giving a cool look as well. So what you're seeing is lots of options there. Let's just duplicate this one. We'll put it back on top and set that to normal mode. And you see how we get a lot of flexibility there to get some really nice images. And that's a nice combination there of using multiple layers to pull off the black and white effect. You want to finish this off with a little bit of a vignette, while you're in the adjustment layers, you might as well go ahead and take advantage. We've got a ability here to do things like gradient maps if we want to do tinting. Or we could just go ahead and actually add a regular gradient. Go down to the bottom of the layers panel and just choose that you want to add a gradient. There you see it. And I'll do a black to white gradient set to radial. We'll reverse that. And we can now go ahead and adjust the angle and the scale so we get sort of the vignette we want. You can move that around as needed. And I'm pretty happy with that there. I'll change that to multiply mode because that's how shadows are supposed to behave. And just drop the opacity down a little bit so I'm getting a darkening of the edge. That looks pretty good there. Now, that's just a quick way of doing black and whites. I hope you see that it's really quite easy here in Photoshop. And there's a big difference of really manipulating things versus just simply stripping out the color. My name is Rich Harrington. I'm the author of the book, Understanding Adobe Photoshop. I invite you to check that out at your local book reseller. And I hope you enjoy all the tutorials here on tipsquirrel.com.